Hi. In this video, we are going to take Spark. We are going to integrate Spark with XGBoost and then run it on a GPU uh, based Adware accelerator. So if you see typically uh, Spark has inbuilt machine learning algorithms. It has support for a lot of algorithms including GBM and Random Forest. But XGBoost is not natively supported. One good thing the XGBoost community has done is it has provided an XGBoost uh, Java binding. Right, and uh, we are going to take that XGBoost 4J Java binding and XGBoost 4J Spark binding and then integrate it with the integrate with the Spark. That is one thing we are going to do. The second aspect that we are going to do is we are going to run it on a GPU based system. Now Spark by itself is distributed. Why do we need GPU? Right, there are a lot of AV compute processing and matrix multiplication. Typically Spark operates on a row by row basis. And in, in case if you want to accumulate the rows into an uh, memory and then do a vectorization, then you can also use Spark along with XGBoost. You can take the Spark uh, capability of distributed computing along with the GPU vectorization uh, execution capability and then combine it bo both together for sp fast execution. There are a lot of use cases if you take uh, weather forecasting, if you are to forecast weather for the entire uh, US or entire world, there are a lot of zip codes. So you want something like that can run in parallel and that's why Spark comes into play. Now within each geography, you may have a lot of models that are running, uh, forecasting models. You can take that and completely vectorize it and run it on GPU. So you can increase the speed of processing by uh, multitude over here. Uh, Spark on XGBoost again as I said it's not natively supported so what we are going to do is we are going to install some libraries so that Spark can work on XGBoost and I'm going to do completely in Colab it's a very simple installation the installation will not take a lot of time uh, but the main thing is config configuring Spark to and to run with it I'm going to show you that also in a pretty easy step after this you should be able to set up Colab environment install Spark install XGBoost and run it on a GPU and for GPU, I'm going to use Rapids framework, Rapids AI framework. Uh, in case if you have not uh, heard of Rapids, I have a video on what is Rapids. It's a pretty simple video. You can click the link on the top and you can watch it. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a GPU accelerated framework. It has Pandas and scikit-learn equivalent of uh, GPU. So it has something called QDF, that is CUDA data frame, that is Pandas drop-in replacement. It has QML, which is a scikit-learn drop-in replacement. So a lot of functions is going to be very similar to your Python, Pandas and scikit-learn functions. So let's get started with uh, the, uh, the video, the code part of it. So first thing is when you are running, make sure your runtime is set to GPU because we are going to execute on a GPU. And once your runtime is set, just uh, run NVIDIA SMI and make sure you allocated a GPU. So in this case, I am allocated an uh, Tesla P4 GPU. All right, and the fathers, it's pretty enough. You know, sometimes you may get T4 as well, which is IN GPU, but here it's P4, that's completely fine. So in order to install Spark, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to install Spark. And a Spark is basically uh, written in Scala, so it requires uh, JVM, it requires a JDK underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install JDK over here. I'm installing JDK 8 and that's what you're seeing the first line. Once the JDK install is, the installation is done, I'm downloading the uh, Spark package from uh, Apache website and then I am unzipping the Spark package. And then I am installing a package called find Spark, which will find the Spark and initialize the Spark environment. So it's pretty, pretty simple. It will just uh, take few minutes to run this. I have already run it in the interest of time. Now, once the Spark is installed, we need to get uh, relevant XGBoost components. And that's what, what I am doing is I am uh, I'm going to the Maven repo. So as I said, like Spark is written in Java and I say XGBoost 4J, which is also a Java component, uh, which is also like a Java binding and a Scala binding. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download these three files. QDF is for Rapids AI to run on uh, to run on GPU. It has something called a GPU data radar and GPU data frame. We are going to use that. So that is QDF. Uh, then I am uh, downloading XGBoost 4J.jar and XGBoost 4J Spark.jar to run on Spark. So these are the package I'm just downloading it from uh, the Maven repo. So just I'm doing wget and I'll get downloading it. I have done that as well. So if I do an LS and PWD, you can see I have the Spark, uh, uh, I have the XGBoost jar, I have the Spark package that I ran and downloaded and then I extracted it out. This is the extracted uh, package. Then I have the QDF jar file and the XGBoost Spark jar file. So these are the things I have over here. Now, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
set set the path for java women's park home so before you start java project if you are already working on java project you know that's a basic thing you need to set the java home so that it finds the java and executes so i am setting java home i am also setting spark home spark is again this this package uh, this is in the content directory i am printing the uh, present working directory over here this is in the content directory and that's what i have given slash content slash uh, the spark uh, so i am setting both of it so uh, let me run this now when we run a spark job we typically use spark submit and in spark submit we have to package all our dependency together and submit it so we have like iphon iphon jars parameter where you package all your jars together we have iphon iphon py files where you uh, get your dependent py, uh, python files along with the uh, spark submit right so what i'm going to do here is i'm again setting an os environment variable called pyspark submit arguments so when i am starting the py pyspark environment i want this jars to be set in path so that i can import the package from that that's what i'm doing so i'm calling the iphone iphone jar parameters and the three jars that we downloaded i'm just setting it in an uh, path so all the three jars i'm setting in a path so in this case this uh, in this case that's what i'm doing then i am importing find sparks find spark is a package that i uh, pip installed uh, i am importing find spark and i am calling the init method so it will initialize the spark environment and then i am calling the spark session in the spark session i am uh, so so when if you need when you talk about spark you need a spark context to execute your spark job or a spark session and that's what i'm doing over here so i'm importing a spark session and then i'm telling my master is local environment i don't have an uh, distributed environment over here so my master is going to be my local and after that i am allocating driver and executor memory in this case the driver and executor is to be the going to be the same node since i am using collab i don't have distributed environment and finally what i am doing is i am also adding uh, the, the py py, py files uh, i am giving the jar file even though it's a jar file internally it has python bindings for xgboost uh, spark so i am just adding it in the spark contest so that i can uh, import the packages from this particular jar file so let me quickly run this it's going to initialize the spark and get the environment ready now this package is what as this from import you can you are seeing the first two import right this import is coming from this package so this package i am importing like ml dml let's say xgboost 4js and i am importing the xgboost classification model in xgboost classifier these are the two packages i am importing uh, uh, so if i don't set this py file path then you will not it will not find it so make sure you set the py file path over here then from rapids uh, where which is the other jar file i had uh, uh, i am importing gpu data reader so that's a qdf that's a gpu data reader i am uh, importing so these two i am importing and then i am also importing the pyspark regular package uh, multi class classification evaluator to evaluate the output of model then i am importing numpy and pandas so uh, these are the packages i am importing for this purpose for this video i am going to use the cover type data set so basically the cover type data set contains three observation so it's a forest and there's a lot of trees so there are, it contains three observation from four area of a national forest in colorado uh, these observations are categorical variable and uh, it is it is taken from a 30 to 30 meter uh, section of forest Uh, the, uh, this data set almost has half a million records, so it's a good data set, and it has like around 55 columns. Uh, it is a good data set to benchmark on GPU. Uh, don't worry about uh, the data. What is the data inside? You can go and read it online. It's it's in the UCI may uh, repository as well, as well as fetch OpenML. I'm using Scikit-Learn fetch to uh, OpenML over here. Uh, so let's quickly view the data set also. But the main purpose is uh, to see how Spark can be run along with XGBoost on GPU. That's the purpose of it. so after that let me print the shape uh, it has close to half a million records as i said and it has around 54 columns right and let me see the target value so if you see the target as between this is 1 to 7 it has seven classes 1 to 7 uh, telling what is the cover type of the particular forest that's what it is uh, telling here so what i'm going to do is now i have taken this data set and loaded into a cover type variable i am going to assign uh, load it into a pandas data frame so i'm showing you pandas so that i can see the data but once i'm done with pandas we will get into uh, the gpu data frame the yeah, gpu data reader frame okay so here what i am doing is i am i am kind of uh, uh, assigning the data that is the cow type data the, the cover type as data and target i am assigning to it and i have the column also it has feature names and target that's what i am giving it over here and i am assigning to uh, and cow type data frame which is a pandas data frame 
and then I'm quickly checking how many, how much memory it uses. So basically it's a pandas data frame. Now I can use the memory usage parameter and do a sum. Uh, so let's quickly see how much it is using around uh, 255 uh, MB. All right. And let me quickly see the rows. How, uh, what are the rows? As I said over here, it has 55, 54 variables and all these variables are numeric variables. So we don't have to do a lot of feature engineering. Um, I have a separate video for Spark ML feature engineering and end to end Spark ML. Uh, if you want to check how it can be done, you can click the link on the top and watch it. But this video, we are just going to focus on uh, how to run XG boost on GPU, right? So this, these are the different 54 variables. And the last one is the target variable, which is one to seven. That's what we saw on the top. It's between one to seven, right? So let's quickly uh, get the shape as well so that you can see there are 55 columns. 54 was without the target. That's 55 columns. Let me quickly check the distribution of target. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the data frame, target is the column, and I'm just doing a value count. It will show the distribution. So class one and two is major and others are basically uh, pretty less. So it's kind of an imbalanced data set, but let's not worry for this particular session. Right. And these are the columns and what is the data type. When I do an co of the uh, that uh, uh, cover type data frame dot D types, it's showing it's all our object. So in so order for me to feed it into the model, it should be an integer or it should be a float or it should be, it should be numeric value. Uh, right. So I need to convert this into a numeric value. So what I'm doing is here, I am taking the uh, data frame dot columns. I am iterating it into a calls variable and I'm calling the pandas dot tune numeric. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to take all the columns and convert it to into numeric because the data is already numeric. It, it will not have an issue, but in case if you have some string data or something, then it may, it will fail. But in this case, we know the data is all numeric. So I'm just uh, running it. And one more thing I have to do is the class, if you see on top, it's between one to seven. And if you know a typical machine learning framework requires the class from start to start from zero. So what I'm doing in this case is because it's one to seven, I'm just subtracting minus one. See here, the code data type dot target, I'm subtracting minus one and assigning it so that the one to seven, it will make to zero to six. Now, after that, I am splitting the data frame uh, 80, 20. So basically what I'm doing is 20 F, I am just sampling 80, a point 80 percent of the data. And then uh, when I am assigning to TEF, I, uh, test data frame, I am taking the train DF dot index and then dropping it. So basically the test will get the 20% of data. You can also use uh, scikit-learn train test split. Uh, but in this case, I just took a shortcut. Uh, you can use this as well. There's nothing wrong in that if you are doing going to do a random split. But if you are going to do a uh, more kind of a stratified split or a smart split, I would say uh, do it by yourself, right? Now this two data frame is done. I'm going to save it into a parquet format. So think of it when you, when we talk about uh, machine learning, uh, typically we collect the data and the year we are, we use cover type data as a collection. Then we clean the data. We saw the data type was mismatched and all this stuff. We cleaned it. And then finally we store it into an repository, right? And uh, when we talk about big data repository, Parquet is a pretty good format. It uh, also, it's a columnar format. It's fast, efficient. It's known by most of the big data framework and it, it is also like lean in size. Right? So what I'm doing is I'm telling the strain DF and test DF to Parquet and I am giving a name to store it. And then I'm telling compression is snappy. So basically it's going to take the parquet, it's going to create a parquet format and also going to compress it, do a snappy compression, right? And if you see over here, it has created these two files, test and train. These two files it has created. Now, how do we, uh, how do we understand what is there within uh, the parquet file, right? So we need to know what is there within the parquet file. So that is a, uh, you can use the PyRO package. PyRO package is again uh, open for PyRO, is uh, open format, uh, it's Apache Arrow format, where it allows transmission of data without serializing and deserializing between multiple frameworks. It can be Pandas, it can be Spark, it can be Rapids. So that's what, so what I'm doing is I'm importing PyRO.parquet and then I am doing a parquet.read table. So PQ is the alias and PQ.read table, the parquet. So it will show me how the data is stored in the parquet. So if you go to, uh, if you go on top and see this one, you can basically see all the data type is double because we converted into double. And because the target column was integer, it's only a zero to six class. It can take care as integer. And then you can see below each and every column and how it is stored within the parquet file. So that's where this PyRO package helps us. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load both this train and test data into a GPU data reader. So I am moving, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm moving my memory, moving my data from your physical memory into a GPU memory. Uh, to train it in GPU. So that's what I'm doing. Now in a typical case, if you have a big data ecosystem, if you have an HDFS file system or S3 file system, you will just take the data from the S3 file system and load it into GPU memory. Right? That's what kind of I'm doing. I have saved that in the Parquet format. So what I'm telling is I'm using a GPU data reader, which is part of uh, Rapids. I'm telling Spark is the framework. Uh, Spark is my uh, Spark session that I created. And then format is Parquet and then loading the uh, loading the train and test data set. So it will create uh, train data and test data. And this is basically an GPU data frame now, right? So like, I can quickly print the schema and see, you can see it's a GPU data set and it is basically, and uh, it's coming from the HGBoost Scala package that we have. And I can also, what I can do is if I want to see the column names, I can also do the PyRO Parquet, read table this and I can print the column names. Now, why do I need to have the column names? Because I need to know which are my uh, features and which are my target variable. That's what I'm doing. So I'm telling my label is target over here, which we, which I showed you in the top. And my features are just iterate the pq file dot column names, what we did on top and ignore only the label. So the features value will contain all the features except for the label column. So if you quickly print it, yeah, the target variable is gone, which was there in the last. It has all other variable. Now let's start the XGBoost modeling process, right? So now what I am uh, going to do is, and you can also fit your uh, Spice Park pipeline with it, right? But here I'm just going to show you XGBoost. So basically, XGBoost by default, by default provided law, by default provides lot of mechanism to distribute XGBoost. It has Kubernetes, it has Dask, it has CI YARN, and uh, there are like uh, cloud providers who have their own distribution as well. In turn, they manage it for you, rather own they manage it for you. But here I'm going to use Spark for distributing it. Right. And since if you, if you are a company which already has Spark, then this is a good way of running XGBoost. Now, what I'm doing is I am just importing the time to benchmark the time it takes. I am uh, creating the hyperparameters because I want to run it on GPU. I'm telling the tree method is GPU -ist, and then I'm running it for thousand rounds. That means uh, it's a boosted classifier. So it will create thousand trees, uh, correcting the previous error. And then the max depth of each tree is eight. And then I'm creating a classifier uh, object, which I'm feeding a XGBoost classifier. I'm passing all the parameters that I have given. I'm telling my label column is label and the feature column is feature. So that's what I'm doing over here. And then let me uh, let me start the training of the model. So here what I'm doing okay. is, I'm, I'm telling classifier, classifier object dot fit with the train data. data. So it's going to uh, take the uh, data, it's going to take the hyperparameter and then build the model for us. And if you see like we are telling for 1000 rounds and typically if you run this on a CPU, it's going to take a lot of time because it is like 1000, uh, 1000 trees and uh, each tree is 8 node depth, right? So it's, it's at, at least going to take like uh, uh, maybe 10 times more than your uh, regular GPU based running. Right, you can you can maybe run it and see, but here it took 34 seconds to build it, and you can see like it's done. Uh, then what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go back and check NVIDIA SMI to see whether GPU was used, and time. you can see here like uh, there are like thousand uh, three mega mega megabits that was used uh, in the GPU, and uh, it is it has done everything on GPU, right? So that's what the purpose of this is to show GPU. Now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to take the model and save the model. So I, uh, I'm saving it in a content slash model directory. Uh, so it's going to take the model and going to save the, the model. Now you can, once the model is saved, you can see here the model directory is there. So once the model is saved, what you can do is you can take this model and you can deploy it uh, in production in a Spark environment. Uh, you need a Spark environment to run this, but if you, there is an option called ML Leap, which maybe I will come in the future session where you can run it in Java, or you can convert this into a PML, PMML file and run it in other languages, right? So now this is done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load the model. Now, whatever saved model is there, I'm just telling load the model to the load model, and I am going to use the test data and uh, perform the uh, kind of evaluation of the data, right? I'm going to see how my model performed. So if I do results.show, it's going to show me the final uh, data frame and output. So basically you can, if you see on the top, it's, it's basically showing you everything. So I can go to the end, the end column, the end will have the predictions. Uh, so let me go to the end and then you can see 
the last three variables are basically probability and prediction and raw prediction so this uh, it is now i can just uh, run the final uh, i'm using the classification evaluator to see how my model has performed see i just did not do anything i took the data and just ran it so maybe the model will not be more than 70 percent or it's 71 percent accurate but now uh, you are able to run in gpu now you can go and uh, run multiple iteration do feature engineering run it for more iterations uh, depends on where you are seeing the misclassification it's a imbalanced cast maybe you want to uh, do some scale positive weight or you want to do some uh, balancing over there so there are multiple options that you can uh, try it out the one advantage of gpu is it it it, it speeds up your exp experiment process so when as a machine learning engineer when you uh, go and develop a model you have to do thousands of iteration to get into the right data right model right hyperparameter now if each model is going to take one hour to run then if you go thousands you you will just spend our sp you just be waiting in front of a computer uh, waiting for the model to finish so what uh, gpu allows you to use is you is to run it fast and spark also allows you to distribute and run it fast so it's going to kind of speed up your performance for multifolds and that's it for this video thank you